Well, hi. Guess what? Let's do another day in Arch. Today's the fifth day. Hi there, Chris from the Linux Action Show here, if you're new. And uh, I've switched to Arch as of Sunday after last week's episode. Actually, while it was still even just encoding, I was reloading my Bonobo Extreme to Arch from Ubuntu. And this this right here will be my Friday video, the conclusion of this week in Arch. And, uh, oh, boy, that almost sounds like a new show name right there. And uh, then we'll do uh, Saturday, I'll take a break, although Matt may have a video out. Um, and then on Sunday, we'll sit down on Linux Action Show, the big show, and give you our full thoughts. We have a huge, epic, mega plan uh, show planned, so I want you to join us for that. But I thought I'd cover a few questions and then talk about a couple of things that I'm beginning to experiment with now under Arch Linux. So let's start with uh, some of the responses I got to yesterday's video. Um, uh, there was a good uh, thread that started by uh, Ch- Chimon Bear, I don't, Simon Beecher, I don't know how you say his name. He's he's talking about how he's an Arch newbie. It turns out I've heard from a lot of people who are taking the Arch challenge, which is awesome. And I, I believe he's one of them. And he says, Arch newbie here. I just started dabbling around. I've got a couple of virtual installs done. A lot of people are doing it in VirtualBox. He's pretty impressed with how easy it's been. And he wanted to be clear about the process of using the Arch user repository. You go to the Arch user repository, you download what you want, you untar it, you go into that directory, you make a package. And you switch into there, and then you install the package. Uh, this is essentially what he's outlining, and I'm just being really brief as I go over it, is the, uh, is the process to manually install packages from the Arch user repository. Because we've had a lot of conversations throughout this week about if it's safe to use Yoert and pack AUR and things like that. Um, and that's kind of been an ongoing discussion. And it's interesting because Spyhawk in the Linux Action Show subreddit said, You've learned to use AUR manually if you do it that way, which is the first way I ever did it, too. I didn't actually realize there were tools. I, I When I saw the Arch user repository for the first time, I thought, really? This is what everybody's talking about? I got to go do all this crap? This is going to take me 20, 30 minutes. This is stupid. And I, my first application that I installed from the Arch user repository, I was not that impressed. I just thought, okay, I mean, this is great that I can do it, but it's very manual. Uh, then I learned later there was tools. Well, Spyhawk happens to be uh, the author of one of these tools. He said, if you've learned how to do it manually, you've done your homework. If problems arise, you know how to handle it. For the record, I'm the maintainer of Pack AUR or Pack ur Maybe you could tell me how to pronounce that. And I clearly advise anyone that has never done the steps above to stay away from Pack AUR or any other helpers if you don't know how to handle Arch user repository packages manually. I've seen people installing your work from binary repos and installing Pack AUR with it. Sigh. Those never learn how to use AUR are doomed to failure at the next major Pac-Man upgrade. Um, which is a very good point. In fact, uh, that's also a good point to jump into the discussion around the installation. A, a lot of people say, hey, depending on, your, uh, depending on your point of view, Arch is actually easier to install in a sense because I feel like all the things are getting out of my way and I can just execute the commands I need to just load a basic Linux system. It's an interesting perspective, obviously not a new person's perspective, but... It does fit with that whole arch, keeping it simple mentality. Uh, I wanted to uh, get to a couple more follows before I tell you what I'm working on, because they kind of fit together here. Uh, Wayne on the uh, YouTube video said, Hi, Chris. I manage ButterFS snapshots with Snapper. It's available in the Arch user repository. And he also gave me some recommendations for SSD optimization, including uh, compress LZO, which is uh, I do, and uh, using the no, uh, no access time attribute and the discard. I don't think I don't know about discard, but I'm doing no access time. And you add those to my FS tab for those mounts. And uh, let's go take a look. Why don't we? Gee, how big do you like, you like that? Oh, oh. Let's go in the big terminal so you guys can read it. Cat, Etsy, FS tab. Uh, not, oh, so that's interesting. So you can see here on my home one, I'm doing uh, compress LZO and SSD. So I guess ButterFS just has an SSD option. That's kind of cool. I bet that is a group of a bunch of other options, potentially like no access time and things like that. That's just my guess, though. But he mentioned something there called Snapper. And if you guys remember from my last video, I said, man, I'm loving Arch, but I'm still a little worried that maybe because I'm a bit of a newbie, I'm going to break something and then I'm going to be screwed. I would love to be able to take snapshots. And there's been a few different recommendations how I could do backups. Snapper seems to be like a good one to me because it's using the built-in snapshot functionality in ButterFS. So here's the man page, and I got it super big so you guys can read it. It says, Snapper is a command line program for file system snapshot management. It can create and delete and compare snapshots and undo changes done between snapshots. Okay, that's key right there, right? Because if I'm, if I'm about to do a big arch upgrade or if I'm about to do, maybe I decided I want to go crazy and try KDE, uh, 4.11 when it hits development. 
I want to be able to snapshot my system before I break it. And then when, when it comes totally just bonkers and it won't even boot into X, I want to be able to, on the command line to use a command to snapshot back to where I was before I did that, just like I would a VM. And it's like an image backup in a sense at the file system level. And that's what Snapper lets me do. Snapper never modifies the contents of a snapshot. The Snapper creates read-only snapshots if supported by the kernel. Supported file systems and ButterFS and extended for, as well as snapshots of LVM logical volumes within provisioning are also supported. Some file systems might not be supported depending on your installation. So if anybody out there has been playing with Snapper, this seems like a totally killer way to go to do snapshot management um, without having to get totally crazy into the ButterFS stuff. Uh, now, another recommendation that came in and see, do I have, uh, um, hmm, I forgot who recommended it. I, a couple of people recommended it, actually. Back in Time. And I've talked about this on the Linux Action Show before, but Back in Time, it sits a little bit above uh, the level that something like Snapper does. Back in Time is a, just like a simple backup tool that uh, uses rsync and a very nice GUI to manage snapshots. So it'll it'll sort of see what's changed in between the last rsync and then it can roll you backwards and it can get the GUI lets you organize it by date and you can I also really like the fact that you can snapshot just certain directories you can go in there and say oh you know I boned up my documents directory you can just restore that so this would be a really good secondary if you're more concerned I think about data and you're more worried about like if my hard drive pops and you're less worried about screwing something up and need to be able to revert back 10 minutes. See, I want to be able to revert like all packages, all dependencies, all libraries, everything to go back in time, just 10 minutes. Whereas back in time is actually more like the files can go back in time, I think. That's from my understanding. From And I've looked at it, but it's been a long time. But this is definitely an option for those of you who, who have a file system that you have a lot of files that you want to back up and you're not necessarily going to do a file system snapshot. Go check out back in time. Seems like maybe it's borrowed its uh, name from the OS X equivalent, which is also kind of essentially rsync. Uh, moving on, yes, I did get Netflix working. That was one of the questions. Um, it's, uh, it's in the user repository. And uh, let's see if I could be about to... Yeah, I hate it when Netflix goes full screen. Why do they got to go full screen like this? Hello, Netflix. Hello. So there you go. That's Netflix. I have no idea how I actually close this. Oh, good. Well, Alt F4. <laughs> Uh, turn page watch hands here says I have two problems with Archbang remember I asked what you guys thought about using Archbang as a jumping off point instead of starting from scratch uh, but not having anything to do with laziness or one being more rewarding the first is that Arch install experience helped me look for errors um, look out for errors I might have had it also teaches you how to configure and maintain your system as you go so I'm worried that Archbang users might run into a wall sooner the second is now that I've installed plain Arch a few times I might not know how my main system is configured out of the box if I use it instead. Now, these are interesting points. I definitely agree on the troubleshooting aspect. You know, the years I spent running Gen 2 were very, very valuable, just understanding the fundamentals of how, how Linux works. Uh, here, here, Matthew McKean was the one that recommended back in time. He mentions how it uses rsync. Linux for you and me uh, responded to my response. Uh, he says, my comment was more towards individuals that want to tinker and learn. Remember, he was uh, he's kind of making fun of people who are being lazy that wanted to use um, jumping off distros. But he says, from, from what I've gathered from your previous video asking about Archbang, I assumed I was answering a question towards a user who had the time and wanted to learn new things. If I was responding to somebody who just wanted a system up and running quickly with minimal hassle, then I wouldn't recommend such a learning curve experience and would recommend an out-of-the-box distro. Now, does he mean just not Arch at all? That's my question to you, Linux, for you and me. Um, all right, so there's those. So go check out Back in Time and go check out Snapper. If you're using Snapper, let me know what you think. I'm going to start rolling it out this weekend, so maybe by the uh, Linux Action Show on Sunday, I'll have a pretty good idea of how it works. I got to say, overall, though, having a lot of fun still. Day five, and I'm still really enjoying myself. And I haven't had any GNOME crashes since I turned off that Tasker uh, extension. Just a l little, little itty-bitty update there. I don't know about... Let's see if my act I hear a lot of I've heard a lot of different things around Steam and that activities menu bug. Some people tell me it happens to them in KDE, some people tell me it doesn't. Some people tell me it happens if you launch Steam games from within Steam and some people say it doesn't happen if you launch them outside of Steam. I don't know if that's the case. I can't I'm so confused right now. I can't keep it straight. But let's launch trying and see what happens. Cuz now I'm hoping I did I I tweaked my video driver uh, to try to fix something else, and um, I turned something else off. Oh, 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 I also updated my NVIDIA driver. There's been an update since I last tried this, and I turned off that extension. 
It's a lot of stuff, so let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Load ink. Load ink. Hey, it's not there so far. I think that fixed it. Now, I don't remember last time. Did it come back? How did that work last time? Hmm. It just doesn't seem to be working at all, does it? Oh, it is. Look at that. It's gone. It fixed it. I think it was that tasker extension. Well, there's one way to find out. Okay, why don't I exit the game? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go turn on the tasker extension and uh, see what happens. Do, 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 do. Oh, installed. Derp, 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 derp. All right, so sensors, taskbar. That wasn't called, it wasn't called taskbar, it was called taskbar. All right, turn that S on. See, now I get this really nice, but see, what I was thinking is, I bet it uses OpenGL to get these window previews, right? You thinking what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking that screws with the game. That's what I'm thinking. All right, let's hit play again, see if it's back. Engage. Hmm, it's not there. It's not there. Oh, so now I don't know what fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! I mean, I'm glad it's gone. And actually, it didn't really bug me that much, but it really seemed to bug you guys out there, like a lot. So I thought, well, I better fix this just so that way I can say I fixed it. Because like every video, it's even though it only happened in the first video, it's gotten commented. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Somebody explain that to me. It must, maybe it was the video driver update. Which, I don't even know if I mentioned, outside of just trying this, that I was pretty happy with, uh, uh, you know, I, I did my, I did an update, and I've been installing a lot of packages from the Arch user repository, um, and uh, I was a little worried. I was a little worried. And when I saw that NVIDIA driver fly by the screen, I thought, well, there's a chance, there's a chance, and I, you know, I do video mirroring hookup and all that kind of stuff, so I really need this to work well, and there's a chance this is going to bork it, but uh, let's give it a shot, see what happens. And uh, no, not even a problem. Not a problem at all. Still having the 60i interlacing uh, issue. So that's why I had my terminal fonts really big for you guys. And a lot of you said, go into the NVIDIA uh, settings window in here and then go into X server display configuration and then choose advanced. But you see, the little spot right here. So if I go here, oh, oh snaps. Oh, it only says 60 though. Well, see, I need, I need uh, 30, I believe. Yeah. So, I don't know. But that was actually better than... Let's see here. If I go auto and I do that. Oh, okay. I think I just fixed this too. <laughs> uh, there's no way for me to do this without breaking the capture. So, I'll have to end the video right here. And then we'll find out in the Linux Action Show on Sunday if this fix worked. You'll know because the fonts will look amazing, even if I forget to tell you. So, I will try this as soon as I hit stop because if I do it right now, it's going to break the video because it does a mode change. But there you go. So this has been my five days in Arch, and this concludes my daily videos. But uh, I had a great time. I've been loving all the feedback, and thank you guys for helping make this an awesome and fun experience. It's not just been educational. It's also been like something I've really enjoyed doing. And I attribute that a lot of you to helping me and uh, giving me ideas and suggestions of things to try in the dialogue, both in the subreddit, on Google+, and on YouTube. So that's more than both, because that's more than two things in all of those places. All right, everybody. See you on the Linux Action Show.